good afternoon students hope all of you are keeping well uh, today uh, we will be starting the topic and discuss on gender studies specifically we will be discussing on uh, feminism in india do a country like india needs feminism at all that will be our discussing point today in this class uh, <clears throat> feminism is a very misused term and concept sometimes we think feminism is only for women it does not concern men at all uh, that is the reason why family the concept feminism is being misused and misunderstood and today we will be discussing what does exactly feminism means mm? and we will be also discussing is it really against men is feminism against men mm? is it placing women above men is it the purpose of feminism yeah this is these are the few topics we will be uh, discussing before uh, we enter into our uh, days Actually, all human beings are equal regardless of our gender. That is, whether you are male or female, whether I am male and you are female, we all of us are equal. Feminism is not about above men or <coughs> subordinating men folk. But it is actually trying to bring in equal level, that is, male and female in a equal paradise, hmm? where men and women will be equal in all the respect, whether it is in the field of education or whether it is in the field of uh, nutrition, politics, whatever it may be, hmm? all the fields that everyone will be equal. And often uh, it is thought that feminism is a women movement, but it is not so in reality. It is a movement for all human beings because it's about liberating both men and women. Feminism try to uh, or tries to liberate both men and women from uh, the conception of the rights and the place of women in the society. Yeah, that's why it's a liberation for both the groups. Uh, except that feminism does not just come in. We all of us know every event has a cause or every result has a cause for nothing yeah everything has a reason that's why also has a reason for its origin we have to accept that women have been the prime victims of years of patriarchy and the dominance and subordination of men yeah uh, we all of us know what does patriarchy means patriarchy is a men rule society where men are the head of a family men decides everything yeah what is to be uh, bought or when it comes to uh, decide for uh, in the house like purchasing house or land or whatever may be, may be giving marriage to children, it's the man who decides. Yeah, that's why it is called patriarchy. Yeah, India is one of uh, the society, patriarchal society. What tries to do is actually it dominance and subordination in order to bring both uh, uh, in equal paradise both and male and female yeah trying to bring in equal level 
is uh, inferior or superior so everyone is equal regardless of their gender yeah that is a small introduction for our feminism uh, gender studies that we call <clears throat> now we will go to our specific topic for today's discussion uh, feminism in India sometimes we think that feminism came into India much later than uh, that came in Europe uh, when we study the history of feminism we read that the feminism actually started from Europe or we can say from West but when we browse through our history even before the term feminism came or originated in uh, some great uh, feminist culture and history which we will be discussing few of them yeah <clears throat> uh, first we have is Draupadi of Maharashtra uh, Mahabharata <laughs> Maharashtra Mahabharata we all of us know uh, Draupadi was born of fire she was very intelligent as well as very charming very beautiful yeah? that's why all or it is said that all men who met her wanted to have her as wife that means you can be of that lady yeah, Draupadi uh, but what happened was actually educated no doubt uh, in her time impossible to imagine for a girl when uh, even difficult for a male family to be educated it was said that uh, one to house to educate her brother so along with her brother she was she was also educated yeah, that is how she was well in the, well educated and she was she became an in, uh, intellectual yeah that is how it is uh, written about her uh, the thing is now when actually it comes for her marriage when we analyze we realize that actually she didn't have the right or she didn't decide who was to be her husband actually she was given to marriage as a prize uh, for a uh, game like uh, that uh, all kings all princes were all princes were gathered yeah whoever could shoot the eye of the fish looking at the uh, water down and the fish the fish will rotate and the uh, the, uh, the person who could be able to so, uh, shoot in the eye of the fish then that would marry Draupadi yeah to Draupadi yeah luckily that Arjun shot it yeah problem comes is here when Arjun and his brothers went back home yeah, it is before they entered to the house it, since it was Yudhisthira the eldest told mother present we, we got a present uh, or with the Lord was the uh, present that they got she just said, share among your brothers uh, so that is how Draupadi became uh, wife of five husbands we all of us know it is not easy to manage one husband and Draupadi with her tactic and with her intellect she managed all her husbands uh, very faithfully it is said that she was a very faithful wife that means she used to perform all the duties of a wife and she pleased all her five husbands uh, you can imagine what would be uh, the feeling of a woman who has to serve five husbands. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes maybe uh, one in one article I read, like husbands, sometime they just come to meet their needs, not for love, yeah, not for caring for her. <clears throat> so those there was uh, there maybe moments yeah she was frustrated but still as a uh, wife as an Indian woman yeah, she fulfilled all her duties as a wife 
but it said that uh, she was uh, like even when uh, they played Juwa, right? All of us know that five Pandavs lost and they have to open her sari. Yeah, a lot of things are being written about Draupadi. But what is said uh, as a, from feminist perspective when we read is that uh, she didn't keep quiet. Yeah, she retaliated and she fought for her right. Yeah, from that perspective, actually, Draupadi is considered to be as a feminist, yeah, earliest feminist. And next we have is like every all of us know Ma Durga. Every year we celebrate Durga Puja. Like she, actually she is an incarnation of Goddess Parvati. Yeah? She was created as an amalgamation of all gods to destroy evil. And now here one thing we should observe actually as a woman, Durga. Yeah, uh, she fought not only for her right, but for the rights of everyone. Uh, all the society so here once uh, one thing we should learn is that it's not that women are weak yeah they can also fight for the society and they can also fight for their right it's not that they are weak they are strong yeah that is example we have is madruga when we know who was the ashura uh, ashura wh whom she killed ashura was a man so <laughs> in that way <clears throat> that we should learn yeah, from this uh, story uh, from this Madurga also that women are not weak yeah they they cannot be always uh, subordinated yeah? they can also fight yeah they can also liberate or they can also protect the society yeah for uh, they can also protect the, uh, pro protect anyone yeah? who is in need so that is how we learn here and next we have is we have a Sita of Ramayana uh, Sometimes Sita is prescribed, uh, described as very fragile, weak, very like obedient wife, such as so many things. But when we look at her life story, we see that she was not so. When she was abducted by Ravana and when she returned back from Ra uh, Lanka, that her husband doubted that this many days she was out of her husband's touch. So she, he doubted on her chastity or purity. So she put her to the test. Yeah, that is fire test. Uh, they call, but she passed yeah, through that fire test. But what Sita did was she didn't forgive her husband for doubting her. She decided to leave her husband and raised her two sons single-handedly. Yeah, now what we actually today that we should learn from uh, Sita is that uh, bear all the tortures that is put on you by your husband or by your mother-in-law or by your father-in-law whatever may be you are a human being you can stand for yourself and you should stand for yourself uh, that is what Sita teaches us should never forgive the person who does not trust you yeah, between husband and wife. But once your wife says something, yeah, husband trusts because husband knows what type of person is his wife, and her wife knows what type of person is her husband. Yeah, that should be the relationship, not uh, what we call doubting or misunderstanding. And we have uh, many other more uh, uh, feminists in our. Indian history, next we have is like uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai, we know who are uh, trying to protect her uh, territory, yeah? her kingdom, fighting against British. And we have the Archan Bibi, who was a brave woman. Yeah, these are a few examples. Many, many more, <clears throat> many more characters yeah? that uh, our India had yeah, as a feminist. So, as uh, capacity of uh, the video is less, today we will finish here and next we will discuss why exactly India uh, needs feminism, especially India, why fe feminism is required. Yeah, that we will be discussing in next class. So, till then, don't go out, stay at home, see the videos, enjoy and read. Okay, and please 
uh, like the video so that we actually it is a kind of uh, a present for you as we also have to send a report okay so thank you